Working hours. Everybody said, Jill, what hours should I work? Should I work days? Should I work nights? Should I work weekends? I think everybody's situation is different based on where you live. If you have children, you have grandchildren staying with you, uh, ballerina class, football class, football lessons, your personal, if you're a bowler, you're a golfer. So we got to kind of work all of this into our schedule. Now, let's just say <clears throat> you have no kids, no grandkids, you're a single person. You can work any hours you want to work. Every Monday, I have a workshop. Every Monday, I have a conference call where usually I will have a carrier on the call talking about underwriting. Every Thursday and Friday, I've got a workshop training call to where I want you to participate. So make a schedule. Your appointment is Monday, Thursday, and Friday, 10 to 11, to be with me. Learn different things, learn different wording, learn different buzzwords, learn different approaches, rebuttals, all the things you need to get better. And I want you to share some of the things you know with other agents that are brand new starting out to help them out. And then in return, they're going to help out other people when they've been in the business for a while. What hour should I work? Normally you get your leads on a Saturday. When you get your leads on a Saturday, some agents work Saturday. They'll get the leads and go out and work them that day there. Well, let's sit and say you're going to work on Monday. You're a Monday type agent. Monday from 10 to 11, you're going to be with me. My suggestion is get out of the house, get going, be where you're going to be, and have me on your car phone, speaker phone, listening to me. Or be listening to me, the carrier, underwriting, as you're driving to your first appointment. Tell your first appointment, I'll be there between a quarter to 11 and 11 o'clock. Those calls normally last a half hour or so. So Monday, I think, should be your early day. Work Monday from like 10 to 5.30 or 6. Tuesday and Wednesday, you sit and say, well, Joe, should I make those my long days? Well, this is what's going to happen. When you go Monday at 2 o'clock and you're speaking with Mr. Jones, and he says, oh, my wife is working today. You're not going to sit and say, well, let me give you the information, because that's called a one-legger, and it usually doesn't work out. So he might sit and say, well, my wife will be home Tuesday and Thursday after 6. So what you're going to do is that you're going to say, okay, this Tuesday or Thursday, I'm going to be working the night shift. So you might decide to go to work at 3 o'clock and work from 3 until 8, depending on other things you have to do. You got day, afternoon, and evening shifts. Then you got Saturdays. If somebody's not home on Monday, what I want you to write on the lead, 1030 Monday. Depending if you're back in that same area, go back by their house, 530, not home. So now you know Monday, they're gone all day long. Or just coincidental. They might be visiting a child. Or they might be shopping that day. You might have called them in between when they came and dropped groceries off to go buy a sport coat. Every day is going to be some type of structure you have to have. If you go to work at a department store and they say you're going to be to work at 10 and get off at 5, you're going to have a half hour lunch break. Those are the hours you got to work. And at the end of the week is when you get paid. With us, you get your leads on Saturday, listen to the call on Monday, you go out and write somebody, one of our carriers, that pay you on issue, you might get paid Tuesday or Wednesday in your checking account. You don't have to wait till Friday as if you work for a regular company, okay? We have the ability to work the amount of hours we want. The more hours we work, the more opportunity we have to make money. Within these days here, You've got to do follow-ups from people who weren't home. People say, can you come back and visit me? My grandchild is sick. I can't speak to you today. My car is in the shop. I need to go pick it up. You've got to do some door knocking because everybody doesn't answer their phone. Senior calls. If you call a senior's house, they don't recognize your number. They're going to go, honey, who's this guy with that last name? They're not going to be able to pronounce your last name. Either you're going to be a bill collector 
a salesman or somebody they don't know, they don't want to answer the phone. So you have to go knock on their door. I formation, T formation. What that means there is that if you have a house that you're going to visit that's right here, this here is what you call is the T formation. There's your T. The I formation is something very simple. This is the house you're going to see here. You're going to see this house, this house, and this house here. You're going to see a total of six houses. Here you're going to see a total of four houses. Something that's been around for a long time. When you have a lead and you're going to go see this person here, is very likely possibility this person received a lead, this person received a lead. All of these people have received a lead, but yet only this person sent the card back in. This person here, let's say they mail 55 and up. This person might be 54, doesn't fall into the data. You knock on their door, your neighbor next door told me you might be home. I thought I'd come by and visit with you. This is called a way to make extra money. You need to work this into your schedule. When you're working into your schedule, something else I didn't put down was referrals. When you ask a client whose house you're in, whether you sell them, don't sell them, make no presentation, make a presentation, referrals, you got to work that into your schedule. Now, you can't say, well, I'm only work my referrals on Friday afternoon because that's what works best for me. Well, if that referral's not home, they say come back Monday night at 7 o'clock. Well, I think you're working late Monday night. So what you can do is that you can work Monday, call 10 to 11. You can maybe do some follow-ups, some door knocking. You can maybe do a couple little T formations. And then from there, get yourself to be at the person's house at 7 o'clock. Cold calls. That's probably the hardest part about our job, if you want to take this gigantic step. You can buy a list from me. That list will have the people that we mail to, the address, the city, state, and zip. will not have a phone number unless you have a SAN number. We can get it for you in order, and then from there, you can see which one of these houses was mailed a card. It's going to have on there, you went to see Mr. Jones, and it's going to have Mrs. Smith's name here. And it's going to have old Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, I can't think of my last name. Mr. Larry Jones over here. Okay. So you're going to say, hello, Mr. Jones. Hello, Mrs. Smith. We recently mailed you a card. And you're going to show them a card. I'll get you a blank card. This is a card we mailed to you. I don't know if you sent it back in yet. But since I'm right around your neighborhood, I was visiting some of your neighbors. You're on my list here. I thought I'd just come by and give you the information you requested. Whether they sent the card in or did not send the card in, they're probably not going to remember the card you're speaking about. This is what I'm going to ask you. I'm doing this video on a Wednesday night. And I'm going to ask you right now, what did you have for lunch last Tuesday? You're probably going to tell me, Joe, I don't remember. So we cannot get upset when a client does not remember a card they mailed in that you got in your hand. So when you go to somebody's house and they tell you, I don't remember doing that, remember the example I just gave you, what did you have to eat? Whether you work a day, afternoon, evening shift, or Saturdays, whatever days you choose to use, I'm going to recommend you to have a schedule, have some structure. Have something done so you know where to go. Where a lot of agents do not succeed is that they're like a cat chasing their tail. They don't know what to do. Do I go see this person? Do I go see that person? What do I do? So if you set something up for you every day, I am going to knock on 20 doors. I'm going to do six I formations. I'm going to go to six houses and do that. Times six is 36 people. If you have a plan, you have structure, and you follow through on it by following up, door knocking, I formation, T formation, cold calls, working your referrals, and working your leads, you're going to have a lot of business and you're going to do very well.